Avery, welcome to the podcast. It's awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. So excited to talk about the Happily Ever After Collective. It's going to be so much fun. Yes. Before we get into that, though, please introduce yourself to our listeners and let them know what you write. So I am Avery Flynn. I write mostly contemporary romance. Some of it's just sort of giggle inducing and some of it gets, you know, put under the hot rom-com thing. I will say my illustrated covers are are deserved. <laughs> I rarely kill people. If I do, they deserved it. And it's it's a little sexier sometimes than people are expecting. But yeah, nobody dies. I don't make anyone cry. That's not my jam. Excellent. <laughs> Now, for our readers who haven't discovered the Happily Ever After Collective yet, tell them what this is about, because it's kind of a new way that we've seen to distribute some books within the romance genre. Yeah, it is. I like to think of it as happiness in your email. So what it is, is you get up to four novellas every month. All of the novellas, you get to pick which ones you want. So it's choice, you know, especially this day and age, sometimes it's hard to find the time to read, find the brain space to read. So novellas are kind of perfect for that, you know, quick stop, you know, an enjoyment factor. So you're still reading and getting that that romance high without as much time and brain commitment that sometimes you're not able to offer. So it's four novellas a month, all of the novellas circle around the same trope, which we think is really fun. And I think one of my favorite things about it so far has been, you know, romance sometimes takes a knock for it's too formulaic or whatever. But it is so great to see all of the authors start in the same place with the same trope and see all of the many different ways that people go. It is just phenomenal. I love that. Every month you are guaranteed a romance with a main character or both main characters who are queer. We, every month, you are guaranteed to get novellas where the main characters are Black, Indigenous, people of color. All of the subgenres, I think, we cover throughout the year. So it might be historical, it might be contemporary, it might be paranormal, romantic suspense, all that fun stuff. And it just gives you a chance to kind of have a surprise every month on what's coming and um, a little bit of that romance happy. You cannot get enough of romance happy. No, no. What was your inspiration to bring this together? Because it seems like big idea that it also involves a lot of execution. <laughs> well, I'm a Virgo. So <laughs> logistics are my happy place. Absolutely 100%. But, you know, I love romance. I love reading romance. I have been lucky enough in the, geez, how long have I been doing this? 11 years I've been doing this to meet phenomenal authors and I just love pretty much everything about romance and I love the amount of variety that you can get in romance there's a romance for every person for every mood for whatever it is that you want so my idea was really just to find a way to number one as a reader what would make me happy as a reader is having you know all of the romance I could get (laughs) so So there was that. And then as an author, what's really fun about this is, you know, a lot of times we're contractually obligated or our readers expect a certain thing from us. And sometimes we want to stretch our wings out a little bit, right? So all the authors that came and got their choice of what kind of subgenre they wanted to write, what kind of storyline they wanted to go with, whether they wanted to make it super angsty or, you know, things like that. We have somebody who is known for her rom-coms that's coming up and she wrote a paranormal. And she just had the absolute most fun of in the world of it. And that's just not something she gets a chance to write. So it sort of made both sides of my reader and author happy. And we we didn't really mention as you were going through it, this is all happening on Patreon. This is yes. where you get the books, where you interact with the authors, because you're also on top of getting the books. There's author chats that go on and a whole bunch of other interesting stuff as well. Yeah, so the authors have been really great. They put together sort of behind the scenes posts, a behind the novellas type of thing. So it might be, hey, here was the Spotify list that I listened to on repeat writing this. Here are recipes that were inspired. Here's what got me really thinking about writing this book. Those types of posts. And then we've got author chats on Zoom every month, which are super fun. And if you miss it live, We post it on the Patreon afterwards so you can enjoy it afterwards. Surprisingly, one of the things that gets a lot of patrons really excited is we post a poll every month at the end of the month and ask people to guess 
which authors are going to be in the next month because that's always a surprise. And people have a lot of fun on that. And I've gotten messages from folks saying, I got one right. And so, <laughs> you know, it's the little things that bring you joy. Because it's quite the guessing game, too, especially in these early days, because there's 48 authors. And of course, that, yes. the number available for the next one will decrease over time because there'll be fewer of them. Exactly. That haven't done it yet. But yeah, it's like, who do I think will do this? And now, that, as you said, now that they're branching out and going to other genres, it, it it's not easy to necessarily pick. Right, exactly. Yeah. And and that's the one I'm really most excited about is seeing what people do with the secret baby trope that's coming up next year. So secret baby surprise pregnancy, I think was what we did with it. And there's going to be, that's not a trope. That's a trope that some people really love and some people really hate. So I am really interested to see what happens. <laughs> and as an author, it's not easy to decide what to do with that either. Cause... Right. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see that's what they come up fun. with on that. How did you find the 48 authors to go in on this experiment? So I've been in this business, like I said, for like 11 years. I've been super lucky to make some connections with amazing authors. And so sort of branch started there and then had got recommendations from people, other people to invite in. We had some people that were unable to join, but they were like, oh my gosh, you have to check this person out. This person would be great for it. And it's really cool because some of the authors are, you know, New York Times bestselling authors. Some of them have been around for, you know, years and years. And then we've got more baby authors, I would say, that are up and comers within the industry. So it gives you a chance to, there's a wide variety of people to pick from. It's not just always the usual suspects. So that was really fun too. Basically, I just ask. I figure <laughs> the worst they can say is no. Exactly. So I just ask. And I love that there are authors in there that people will find who are new to them and who are baby authors like yes. Ray and Gray from from the August set of books. It yes. was romantic suspense. It was a high. So I'm like, I have to read this book. And then my God, it was amazing. And now I want to read more of what yes. they write. Yes, they are amazing. And yes, that's pretty much all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but it's and that's the thing is it's super. It's just you know that high you get when you discover somebody that you haven't read before and you're like, you, you just, it's really joyful to click with somebody's books and then to fall down that rabbit hole, like you said, to go through that backlist is, and then you come up like a month later gasping, but you're so happy. <laughs> yeah. They've got a whole series that I need to go off yeah. and, you know, add to my TBR and then make the yes, time to read it, of it's course. it's really good. Yes. <laughs> Possibly even more difficult than bringing together 48 authors, how do you decide the tropes? There's so many tropes and variations of tropes and tropes that everybody loves. And, you know, some like Secret Baby that are a little more, mm -hmm. you know, splitting the difference on, on likes, but narrowing it down to 12. Narrowing it down to 12 was actually really hard. So what I, what I tried to do was just sort of look, because this was our pilot program, right? We had no idea if anybody would even enjoy this or like this. I had no idea when I was setting it up if any of the authors would even say yes. So, so what I did was I kind of looked through a lot of the chatter within authors in the reading community and seeing what kind of books people really kind of reacted to or, you know, what tropes people were like, oh, my God, that's my favorite one. So, like, for example, Just One Bed. Just One Bed is such a huge, you know, reader Hi. And as an author, I love writing just one bed. So, you know, that's sort of how we picked was just looking at some of the more popular ones. Nice. I can't wait to see what else comes this year. <laughs> it's a good time. That's all I can tell you is it's a good time. How was the author reaction as you were putting this together to this very different way to offer books through Patreon, through keeping things you know, exclusive within that sphere for some amount of time. It's very new. And sometimes, you know, new kind of scares people a little bit. Well, I, I probably gave them more information than they ever wanted when I put the pitch out. <laughs> Again, Virgo. So, you know, listing all of the different, what would happen, how we would pick stories, how readers would choose stories. I had, you know what, some great talks with people who were unable to participate, who, gave me really great feedback on saying, hey, this is, you know, you might look at being able to do this as well. And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. 
So let's snag that idea and scoot that in. So it was really great. The amount of feedback that came back, people had questions and they asked, I'm honestly kind of in awe because not, not only are people trusting this thing that is a little bit different, I'm sure somebody else has done this at some point in time. I just couldn't find anything. If they had, it probably would have made it easier to set up. But, you know, I'm really in awe and super thankful that people trusted me, not just with their books, and that this would be a pretty seamless and easy process for the authors, but also their money. You know, that's that's a big trust, yes. So I'm thankful. Good people. <laughs> it's relatively early days. You launched in August, a soft mm -hmm. launch in July. We're talking towards the end of September, but mm -hmm. how's the subscriber reaction been so far to this method? It, to me, kind of makes me think of like book boxes to a degree, because you subscribe yeah. to something and get something. Or because of my age, you know, back in the day where it's like, you're in this book club and here's your selections for the month and you can check one or, you know, whatever. That's also kind of what it harkens back to a little bit for me. Yeah, absolutely. I, I You know, it is sort of like a digital book box, really, where you get to pick all the goodies. The readers, we've got, I want to say, just north of 250 patrons right now, which is amazing because, again, from a reader perspective, that is, it's something new and weird and how is this going to work? We deliver the, the novellas through prolific works. I wish there was a way to do it through Patreon so we could keep everything on that that platform. I have yet to figure out how to do that. And unfortunately, Patreon hasn't either. <laughs> so if anybody knows a workaround, you know, let me know. But so people have reacted really well to it. It's folks have enjoyed the stories. We're getting a lot of folks who are watching the Zoom chats afterwards, who are submitting questions. That's the other part that's fun is people are sending in questions for the Zoom chat with the authors. And so I think the level of interaction has been really good. And the stories um, are kind of a pain because you've got to sideload them. But beyond that, the reaction has been really good from readers. And at least the sideload from prolific works is not terrible. Probably most yes. people have done it because of a newsletter promo or mm -hmm. something else that's gone on out in the community that they already are familiar with that platform, which might actually be easier than having to make them learn Patreon from that angle. <laughs> that is a really good point. Yes. Yes. That is really true. But you know what? And the other thing is what I've What's been great about the readers as well is they have reached out when they've had questions. And so I'm like, oh, that explanation totally made sense in my head, but it obviously didn't make sense to everybody outside of my head. So, you know, they've been great about, you know, giving a heads up on, hey, this is a little confusing or, you know, we would love it if you could add this. A good example is we had somebody join and they sent out a message and said, you know, our top tier was four novellas a month. And they were like, I really want to catch up on the ones that I missed. So we responded to that by adding another tier that's five novellas. So you can still keep up with the four novellas that are new. And yet at the same point in time, catch up on the ones that you've missed. So that's really fun too. That's good to know. Cause I was going to ask how people can catch up if they're, you know, subscribing after they hear this and want to get something in the backlist. Yeah. So no matter what tier you're on, you get to pick which story you want. So it could be, you know, hey, I'm going to go at the the two novella level and just pick which ones I want and then go from there. Or you could be like, I'm all in both feet and go to the five novella tier. But yeah, folks have been really pretty good about that and letting us know sort of what they want. And we've been flexible enough to try and figure out a way to get that to them. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Again, early days, but yes. what are you thinking for future of the collective? Well, so far, even though it's early days, I'm hoping, like I said, this was a pilot program from us to even see if it would work. I'm hoping that we're able to carry this on, you know, into the future as long as basically readers want it. It's a really fun way for authors to be able to experiment, try something new, do something fun. I think it's a great way for readers to discover new authors and then also get something from maybe an author that they love that they can't get anywhere else. I'm sorry, I'm really guilty of that where I'm like, oh wait, I can't get this anywhere else? Oh, I have to have it then. Mm -hmm. So you know, as a reader, I'm super guilty of that. So being able to offer that is really fun. Now we love book recommendations here because of course it is everything among the romance readers to share. What have you been reading in the queer romance space lately that our listeners should go grab if they have it already? 
All right. What I have been reading. Okay. So I'm really late on some things because that's me. Husband material, Alexis Hall. I love boyfriend material. I finally started husband material. So I'm a little behind on that one. And then the other most recent one that I loved a lot, illustrated cover person, is Love and Other Disasters that Anita Kelly put out. I really enjoyed that. And I would read the phone book if Annabelle Albert read it. So I love her. (laughs) That's that's a really, really easy one for me. And then some of the historical queer romances I really enjoy from The Cat Sebastian have have also been really amazing and uh, yes ray and gray's werewolf series is really really fun <laughs> so yeah. i highly recommend that too that that's the one that's on my tbr now since mm-hmm. i talk to talk to them it's like oh okay i'm gonna have to read that thanks thanks for putting that in my into my uh, tbr <laughs> absolutely yeah it's worth it and move that up move that up it was super move that fun. up <laughs> yeah it, well it's it the pacing is really good and the characterization is great and it's I don't know. I just love it. I, this is why I don't write reviews because it would literally just be like, I loved it. Squee. Right. You'd think I'd never written a word in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes People it's hard. Write reviews are amazing. I can't do it. Yeah. Hats off to them. And how can everybody keep up with not only the collective, but also you as an author? Well, you can find the Happily Ever After Collective on Patreon. We also have a newsletter. We've got the website is the happily ever after collective.com and you can sign up for the newsletter and just sort of check it out. We send it out once a month when the new novellas come out. So you can sort of take a peek and see if there's anything there that would interest you. So those are the best places. Happily ever after collective is also on social media on different spots. So you can follow it that way. I'm basically everywhere. I think at Avery Flynn or Avery Flynn author. My favorite places are Twitter and TikTok. So I am one of those. I'm just not an Instagram person and Facebook is the devil. So, yeah. Avery, thank you so much for spending some time with us and telling us all about the HEA Collective. Mm, Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all of those out there who are patrons. We really appreciate it. 